Hey guys, it's Charlene. I am so excited to be sharing this brand new product with you. This is from Picket Fence Studios and these are their paper pouncers. They just released today. For the next week, they're exclusively available at scrapbook.com. After that, they'll be available over on the Picket Fence Studios website as well. They come in this bright rainbow nine pack and so you've got red, orange, yellow, two greens, a teal, a blue, a purple, and a pink. And then they also come in a three pack of neutrals with gray, brown, and black. So I'm gonna pull these out, show you how these work. These are different from blending brushes. They are different from the foam ink daubers. They, I think, are gonna be a game changer for a lot of different people. So I'm really excited to show you guys these. Now, I got a chance to play with them because I am on the Pick Event Studios design team. So I just want to let you know they did send these to me at no cost, but I, I love them. I was under no obligation to make this video, but I wanted to share them with you guys because I think they are really cool. Okay, so I've pulled them all out here. You can see they stand on your desk just like that. And when you open it up, you have this piece inside that comes out and it's a very, very high quality sponge and it has a little handle on it and it's super soft, very dense. Um, it's not f like the foam daubers. This is like, a, it, it reminds me of like a really high quality makeup sponge. Um, but different from just using a makeup sponge, obviously you have this awesome handle on the end so you don't get your fingers dirty at all. And they're completely different shape from, from a makeup sponge. You can see they're kind of this flat, um, circular shape like that. And when you're done using it, you can close them back up so you don't get ink all over everything while you're working on a project. You can set it in the base so you don't get ink all over everything and I just love how brightly colored the containers are. I think these are gonna look awesome put up on a shelf. So I'm gonna show you how they work. This is the flowers stencil, the six by six stencil from Picket Fence Studios. And I'm gonna show you how these make stenciling incredibly easy. So I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half in A2 sized uh, rectangle of cardstock here and I'm just setting the stencil on there I don't have any repositionable spray or anything on it and I'm just going to set it down there and I'm going to put my magnets down to hold it in place and you could put tape on there but I'm going to show you in just a minute that you don't even need magnets or tape so I've got lilac and surf and I'm going to blend these into each other through the stencil so I'm pulling out the purple pouncer. You can see I've already played with these a bit, making several cards. Now I wanna point out I am doing everything in real time on this video. Oftentimes when I am ink blending or something like that in a video, I will speed up the time. I'm not speeding anything up here, so this is me just naturally pouncing the ink onto the cardstock. And you can see all I do is dab the pouncer into my ink pad and then pounce it up and down directly onto the stencil. So when you're using foam daubers, the foam is much less dense and it, it doesn't have the squishiness of these paper pouncers. So oftentimes it's hard to get into all of the nooks and crannies of the stencil. So I purposely chose a very detailed stencil to show you how easy it is to use these pouncers and get the ink into all the different areas of the stencil. And also when you are using a dauber or you're using a blending brush, you get that repetitive circular motion and you have to do it for quite a while in order to get the ink into all of the different nooks and crannies of the stencil, but you don't have to do that here, which is amazing. So you can see I took the magnets off and I'm just lightly holding the stencil down with my fingers. Normally, if I'm holding a stencil down with my fingers, by the end of it, my hand will hurt because I have to hold it down so hard. I'm just lightly holding this, which is, so awesome. Okay, so I have gone about two thirds of the way down on the diagonal. 
with the lilac and now I'm coming in with the surf and I'm going to cover the surf area and I'm going to bring it up over the lilac. So I'm going to blend the two of them together. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to answer some of the questions I'm, I think you guys will probably have about this product. So it comes like you saw in the rainbow pack and then it comes in a neutrals pack. You can use these with dye inks or with distress oxides and the company does recommend that you use a different set of pouncers for dye inks and a different set of pouncers for oxides or other hybrid style of inks like distress oxides. So keep that in mind. I have this one set. I plan to mostly use them for dye inks and then potentially get a second set for myself to use for my oxides. They are super easy to clean off because not a lot of ink stays on the sponge. The sponge, like it, it, it picks up a little bit of ink off of the ink pad and then when you put it on the paper, it kind of sucks it right back off. So you will see the color on the sponge, but if you pounce it onto a piece of scrap paper or a paper towel, there's very little left on there. Also, you can wipe it off with a damp cloth. Uh, you just wanna wait then until it is dry before you use it again. So you can see I have blended the surf up and into the lilac and it looks so pretty, so easy. And you saw that was really quick to cover this entire card panel using those two colors. And I wanna show you, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add just a little bit of ink over the whole thing to tone down the white space. So you'll be able to see, you can ink blend with these if you wanted to, just going over an entire card panel. I did do that off camera and it came out pretty well, but really I'll probably stick with my blending brushes to do that just because I find them to be quicker. But for stencils, you guys, this is awesome. You do not need any kind of sticky mat to stick your stencils on. You don't need any kind of specialty tools or anything like that because your stencil really is not moving around while you're applying the ink. While you're applying that ink, it's staying in place because you're pouncing up and down with the pouncer. And you can see I, I'm not pushing hard or anything on there. Um, you can tap off if you want to, which I am doing a little bit with the purple because the purple is such a vibrant kind of dark color. I don't want to get any splotches or anything like that, but I didn't tap off at all when I was using the surf and it's bringing in that little bit of background color, toning down the white space, just going over everything here. Something else that is an added bonus, I don't need to put my ink pad into any kind of holder because it's also not moving around on my desk surface. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the second way that these work just amazing. I have die cut out this very detailed die. This is the big, beautiful dragonfly die. And I picked this die because it has all of these tiny little lines and curly cues and things like that. And I want to show you how well this works. So I've picked out galaxy, which is kind of a dark bluish purple. I'm going to use my purple pink paper pouncer here and I'm going to go right into that ink again and watch how easily this covers up the entire die cut. It's super fast. It gets into, again, all of those little nooks and crannies. And unlike with a blending brush, I'm not bending this. I'm not going to have to worry about holding it down on something so I can ink blend over it. And again, this is all being done in real time. Nothing is sped up here. You can see I just lightly tap it into my ink pad. My ink pad's not moving all over the place, like I said, and then I just pounce right over the die cut. So you could use this for word dies, image dies, these kind of delicate dies like this. And as you saw, these are perfect for stencils. They just, oh, I, I, I'm really excited for these, especially for, those people out there that have wrist issues, this is gonna be, just make things so much easier for them. So there you can see completely covered, the edges are even covered and it's not splotchy at all, nothing. And it's because that sponge, you can see, it pushes down around the die cut. So it's gonna get every little area 
And this would have taken me so much longer with a blending brush or with a foam dauber trying to ink blend this die cut like this. And then again, you can just set it off. And here I am and I'm gonna show you, I'm just wiping this off on a paper towel and kind of pouncing it on there to get any of the excess ink off of there. But there's hardly anything that's coming off. It's, it's awesome. And if I wanted to, I could use a soft cloth that was damp to wipe it off. Again, just keep in mind if you're gonna clean them that way that you do wanna let them dry before you use them again. I'll, I'll probably mostly just dab mine off is my guess at least at this point. For my sentiment, cause I'm gonna go ahead and put together a card for you guys. I'm using the fancy friendship sentiments and dyes. I'm using this one here that says, thank you for all the little things. And you can see there's lots of different friendship related sentiments. This is a good set to have. And I'm stamping this in some black pigment ink because it's nice and crisp and it's gonna give me a really deep black. And I think that's gonna go well with the purple and other cool tones that I have on my card. Once I have that stamped out off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut it. And then I also did die cut two extra and I glued them all together. So it's got a little bit of thickness there you can see. It gives it almost a chipboard-esque kind of quality to it. And then I'm gonna glue my beautiful dragonfly die cut onto the shadow. And so I cut the shadow die out in white cardstock. This also would look really pretty cut in vellum or something like that. But I've just dotted some liquid adhesive all the way around on there and I'm gonna put it down here on the shadow die. I'm not doing a super fancy card or anything for you guys today because really I just wanted to show you the different ways that these pouncers can be used and how easy they are to use to quickly create a card using stencils and die cuts. Like it comes together so quickly, again, all in real time. It's, it's really kind of phenomenal how quickly this came together. So I've put some liquid adhesive there on my stenciled piece. I did cut this down so that there's about a quarter of an inch border all the way around. So I'm gonna glue it in the middle there to an A2 size card base. You could pop this up, um, but I'm gonna pop up the dragonfly on top of there. So I just thought it would work better to just glue it directly to the card base to keep it so that there wasn't too much dimension. Again kind of simple card. I know that's not normally what I do. I usually do these kind of ridiculous cards, um, but <laughs> maybe not ridiculous, but they tend to have a lot of dimension, a lot of different things going on, but simple is also beautiful. So I did add some foam tape there on the back of the dragonfly piece with the outline and pop that up. And then I'm just going to glue the sentiment directly on there, but it's going to be raised a little bit because we did uh, put those two extra die cuts on the back of it, but it's not going to be raised as much as the foam tape. So there'll be a little bit of variation in the dimension of the card, which will be nice too. Once I get that glued where I want it, I'm just going to add a couple of sequins and it's pretty much going to finish off the card. I'm going to be using the all about the purple sequins. So these are a couple of different shades of purple in different sizes. And once those are down, that's going to finish off the card. All right, guys, down in the description box, I have linked where you can find these over at scrapbook.com. Again, they're gonna be exclusively available for the next week there. I have a sneaking suspicion they are going to sell out, um, but uh, go over there, check them out. After a week, they're gonna be available, like I said, on the Pick Event Studios website. I'm not sure if they're gonna be available other places or not, but I wanted to put together this video really quickly for you guys. I put it together in one day and um, got it all edited and voiceovered because I wanted to share this with you. This is gonna be a game changer, you guys, for those people that have any kind of wrist issues. It's so exciting. Okay, all right, guys, I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue Continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.